Hi, I'm here to talk about the Sato steam engine. This one is the 2DR. Steam engine here is a 2DR. Over here we have the B2F boiler and here is the burner that goes with the engine. A couple of other things uh, that came with this engine were measuring cup, funnel, this is to put uh, your steam oil in that lubricates the pistons in the engine. This small little cup here you place under the burner, fill it with a small amount of stove alcohol, place it under the burner and it heats up the burner prior to flashing off uh, the boiler. So that has to be heated then you turn on the control here and let me see here, yeah you can turn on the control to the burner. This is a little valve here, and that's done with this uh, this uh, steel uh, tube that was supplied with the engine. And back here is the engine itself. This is two-cylinder engine. The flywheel on the back. You'll see two, uh, three small cups. One, two, three. That's probably behind the oiler. Before you start the engine, you top these off with motor oil. And here is the container for carrying what's called the steam oil. And the steam oil is this here. So that has to be put into this cylinder here. So what happens is that the Okay, a little glitch there. Uh, this was on pretty tight. I just want to take this off and show it to you. This is where the steam oil goes. You top the cylinder off here with the steam oil and that's to lubricate the pistons in the engine. So you don't want to run this without having the container for the steam oil filled. So a little bit more about the engine or the boiler should I say, uh, you have a center flue down the center of the boiler and a couple of, uh, actually three tubes that uh, pass through the center flue. That heats the steam in the boiler. Then the steam comes through this pipe here. Now this is actually removable. This is just a head case on the front of the boiler. Inside there's a uh, winding of this brass tube, about three coils. So what happens, the flame heats the boiler, turns it into steam, the steam comes down here and then it's reheated again like a superheater and the steam comes out here and passes into the engine then it exhausts, I have two plastic tubes, they're hard to see two plastic tubes attaching it to a drain tank on the other side of the engine and the drain tank is attached to another tube on the funnel and the uh, combination steam and oil is sent to the funnel and the heat uh, causes it to uh, turn into steam and, and it uh, is vented out that way. So again you have a steam coil inside here leading out here superheats the steam and then into the engine and that causes the uh, pistons to go up and down. And here you have the reversing throttle of the engine right back here. One other thing, you have relief valves. There's one here and one here on the boiler. And there's one also on the, over here on the uh, burner. Okay, I wanted to move the camera around so I can show you the rear of the engine. I have it temporarily set up on a board here. I have the uh, boiler screwed down along with the engine. The drain tank is over here. Uh, I told you we have two tubes going out into the drain tank. It also has a third hole that accepts uh, another tube if you were running a three-cylinder engine. That's the next model up from uh, the 2DR. But I have that plugged, as the instructions tell you to. So the steam and the uh, steam oil waste is vented into this tank and then the steam rises and then goes out the funnel. After the run you can uh, go ahead and open up the small uh, cap here in the tank and drain it out. Uh, down here there's also a connection. Inside the front of this boiler is a small uh, almost like a little pan tank 
and I believe that's for if you want to vent one of these hoses in here it'll flash and then create more steam going up the boiler because all it is is a small little flat pan tank that's hooked up here the flame comes down the center of the boiler it's open on this end hits the superheater and it will also hit this uh, tank and any water and waste oil that goes in there will be flashed and again sent up the the stack So I pulled the camera back a little bit, uh, if you'll excuse me, this camera doesn't autofocus so I have to stay within one uh, viewing range. I have it set up in front of the uh, a model I made of the Tug Seguin. Originally I was going to put this engine into the Tug, but then I noticed that <clears throat> I'd have to uh, reconfigure the bow to get the burner in there. It would have been very difficult to uh, get the burner going and to uh, start the flame in there. So instead the Seguin has a, it's RC and it's got a, a whole electric, uh, large electric motor, batteries and uh, solid state speed control. But behind it you can see I have the plans for a steam launch. This is an RC steam launch, it came out of the model boat builder back in about 1984 which is when I purchased this engine. I was going to build the launch, put the engine into it but that never got done. So I still have the Sato engine, the boiler and the burner and I'm going to uh, get this thing going and just show you how the engine runs. Okay a couple of things I'd like to mention here before I start. This is a screw off top on top of the burner. You can take that off and you put in stove alcohol. So this is uh, the type of stuff you use, denatured alcohol solvent, kind of used in a camp stove. And you fill it up to a maximum of 100, 100 milliliters. So that's as much as the, uh, the burner will carry, 100 milliliters. Uh, the boiler itself has a drain plug here or a topping off plug. You fill up the boiler till you see some water coming out the plug and then you go ahead and put the fill valve in. Uh, also, I don't know if you can see it clearly, this is a relief valve. So at a certain pressure the relief valve pops and lets out any excess steam so you don't have a boiler explosion. And you have another uh, relief valve here. Here is the throttle, full, stop. And uh, down below the throttle you have a small pipe. When the throttle is opened wide this allows steam to come out here and you can connect a whistle to it. This center arrangement has uh, plugs in here now but you could put, I think Sato sells them, you could put a pressure gauge in here or even to, if you want to hook up another servo I guess you could even put a, uh, another uh, 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 connection in here to run a whistle. So another thing I'd like to point out is prior to starting up the engine Go ahead and I use a little bit of motor oil and I put motor oil into the three cups and I give a little bit onto the uh, the cranks here in the engine too. Uh, always keep the engine well lubricated before you run it. Okay, I've got a match here. I'm going to uh, light a little bit of stove alcohol here and slip this under the burner. Then we're going to wait a few minutes. That'll heat up the burner and then I'll start to be able to release the uh, flame into the boiler. Okay, as you can hear I've got the burner ignited and we're going to start preheating the boiler and raising steam. It'll take a few minutes. I've got the burner turned down quite a bit. I ran this yesterday and uh, had the burner turned up way too high and I started popping the safeties on the boiler. And when it's too high uh, you get the engine running too fast so you keep the burner throttled back otherwise you're, uh, you're going to keep on speeding up uh, having problems uh, controlling the engine. Now one more thing I'd like to mention as we wait for this uh, steam to come up is when you're filling up the boiler 
Don't use tap water. Always use distilled water. If you use tap water, the mineral in the tap water, depending on where you are, will start to foul up the insides of the boiler. So buy a gallon of distilled water. It'll last you a long time. So getting pretty close here. I'm going to turn the burner down a little bit. I see some exhaust coming out from the other side of the engine. And I'll take this little here and let's see if we can get some steam going here. Still not, still not steamed up. Okay, we'll have to wait a little bit longer. Okay, I've got the uh, burner turned way back and I've got the throttle cracked open here and you can see the engine running. Uh, these steam engines are very, very quiet. Very nice, very quiet. You probably can't see it, but uh, there is steam coming out of the stack. Burn is turned way down. Um, I'm going to see if I can do this. Throttle the engine back here. real slow and I'm going to hit the reversing gear and there you go you can see the engine's running real nice nice and quiet I'm going to throw it again So you don't have the control over these engines like you do on an electric motor, so... And I would assume you need a pretty good servo, a powerful servo, to push back on the steam throttle on the top. Again, you can see here, steam comes out of the engine, drains out into the drain tank, and then up the stack. So you can hear it. Engine's nice and smooth. I'm pull back on the throttle some more. Okay, I've got the burner turned way down. Consequently, we got less pressure in the boiler. And you get some some major RPMs out of this thing. You can hear it going there. Bring it up a little bit more. And now I'm venting out here. And she loses steam. So, there you go, the whole setup. The Sato B2F boiler. 2DR steam engine and the burner.